I'm Felicia and welcome to the drawing class. Today we're drawing a bulldozer, so let's dig in. All right, when you come to your paper, we're going to start with our caterpillar tracks. And these can have a, a lot of different and intricate lines, so just stick with me. I know you can do it. You're going to start with two circles where you want the bottom of your bulldozer to be, so as if it was resting on the ground. We will do two larger circles here. And look, my circles are not perfect, but I'm just gonna do my best to get them as round as possible. And I'm pressing really lightly with my pencil because you never know what lines we're gonna need to erase. These are just guidelines for now. Now inside this circle, I want you to make another circle. If you need to go around a couple times or kind of smooth out an area that got wiggly or straight, then do that. We'll do that on both of the wheels. Then inside each one of those, do a smaller circle. So now you've got three circles within each other. Okay, we'll connect these two circles. Now you wanna connect them pretty much from the top to the top. Um, Now you wanna connect them with a straight line and we'll go from the top of one circle to the top of the other, working as straight as we can. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just as straight as you can, just do your best. And then we'll connect the bottom of the circle to the bottom of the other. Now you can take your eraser and erase any of the lines that are inside of this, these two lines that we've made. So any part of your circles that rest inside those lines, you can erase. We'll do that on both sides. Okay, so now we've got a strip in the middle with like bumps. Um, on the outside. That's what kind of the shape that we've made and then two wheels. Now to make the caterpillar tracks go around, what we're gonna do is trace a line that goes along the outer edge of each of these two wheels. And then when it gets to the top, it's just gonna go straight across to the top of the other line. And then it'll trace around the outside of that other wheel. And when it gets to the bottom, you'll just connect the other two. Now the next part's gonna take you a little bit of time. We're gonna make the actual tread on the caterpillar track that goes around. So um, you're going to start anywhere you want along the outer edge and you're gonna make small little like staple marks. And you're gonna do that evenly spaced all the way around. This is probably gonna take you a minute. So if it takes you longer than it takes me, that's okay, just pause the video and finish. Now, once you've gone all the way around with your staple marks, you're going to go back around and connect each one from the bottom of one to the bottom of the other. This is gonna make our tread. So work your way all the way around, connecting them with straight lines. And again, if it takes you a little bit longer than it takes me, just pause the video and finish. Great job. 
Now let's add those same steeple marks, now that you're so good at them, let's add them along the inside of th these bigger wheels. So we'll just start at the top of one, and just along the outer edge, make a few of these little staple marks. Just from the top to the bottom, working behind the center line, and then you can stop when it goes behind uh, the tracks. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Great, now just a couple little details on the inside of these caterpillar tracks before we work on the actual part of the bulldozer. So what we'll do is up here at the top, along the bottom edge of this track, we're going to put two circles. Just like that. Then from the inside of each circle, you're gonna draw two lines that go down to this line. Then we'll connect the two lines on the top and erase the line in the center. Just like that. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. Two lines that connect down to this line, to this line here, and then connect them at the top and erase what's in the center. Perfect. Now on the bottom, let's see if we can squeeze in three circles right here. I find that the easiest way to do that is to kind of split my space into three sections in my mind and do the middle one first. So I'm just gonna put a circle here in the middle that hits the top and the bottom of this space. And then because I already centered the middle one, I'll just do one to the right side and one to the left. If you drew your caterpillar tracks very long and skinny, you might have room for more than three, and that's okay, just fit as many as you can fit into that space. But I think that three here for mine is perfect. Now let's work up here and make the cab and the engine section of this bulldozer. So again, you still wanna use light lines with your pencil because we are going to be erasing some. So let's work lightly. Um, on, come to the left side of the top of your caterpillar tracks and draw a line that goes straight up. It doesn't have to be super high. Then you'll draw a line that comes from the top of that line straight across your paper to until it reaches about the back end of here on your bulldozer, like right about here to, towards the back of your bulldozer, you want your line to end there. So I'll continue mine out a little bit further so that the end of this line lines up with about the back side of these caterpillar tracks. Now from that point, we'll come down toward the bottom of these caterpillar tracks, but don't come all the way. So stop somewhere above the caterpillar tracks. Okay, now put your fingers somewhere about in the middle of these caterpillar tracks and bring your finger up just a little bit. This is where you want your line as you draw it back in to stop. So we'll come to the bottom of this, line, this back line that we made and come straight across until we hit our finger. So this is coming in about halfway. And then draw a line straight down all the way to your caterpillar tracks. Okay, now come, come here to this space. We're just gonna fill this in with a diagonal line that comes from almost the edge and just angles down into the caterpillar tracks. Okay, let's add a few more details here. We're gonna make a parallel line right above this line right here. So just make it real skinny, the same length as the other one. So you'll have two lines coming in here. I'm gonna make it skinny. And then we're gonna, from this point, we're gonna angle up to the top of our line. 
There we go. Now let's split this space into by drawing a line that goes straight up and crosses over the other one. It's almost like we're making a four square here. And we're gonna continue doing that along the side. So we'll bring this one up to that same height. So these are the same height right here. And then from here, we're gonna do the same thing, but instead of coming straight up, we're gonna just slightly angle it until it comes to the same height as the other one. When all these are the same, then we'll just connect them with a line. And that makes the top of our bulldozer. Let's add a little detail here by adding a parallel line that comes down parallel next to this one. And stop when you get to the same and stop when you get to the same distance down as this line here. So if I just pulled my finger over this way, I need to continue this down a little bit so that these come to the same plane here. Okay, that's because we're going to continue this line here, but we're gonna skip over this. So imagine as if the line's coming here and then start here and continue the line straight out this way a little bit. It's like this is one continuous line, except we're skipping that space right there. Then draw a line straight up and a line over. And this is going to be part of the grill, part of the tractor that lets the engine kind of breathe and get fresh air. We'll split it right down the center with a straight line down and you'll know because this line is diagonal, this space is going to be larger than the other one. So just start at the top and split that space in half as best you can. And then we'll add some horizontal lines going across all the way, making this lovely grill detail. Okay, we're almost done. We get to do the blade next and this part's gonna be really fun. Come to this section here on your bulldozer and put a, a vertical line, that's a line that goes straight up and down, somewhere here in the middle. It doesn't really matter exactly where, just a little vertical slash mark right there. Okay, then we're gonna make two horizontal lines that travel through this center space and out to where we would want the blade to be. So we'll get one there and one here. They are gonna be parallel. They go straight out. Now, just so we don't get confused, let's take our eraser and anything inside those two lines you just drew, let's erase. This is gonna help solidify our shape so that we understand what's going on with our picture and we don't get confused by the extra lines. Great, now let's work on the blade. Draw a vertical line right up through the end of those two lines you drew. It can extend a little bit on the top and the bottom of those two lines. From the top, you'll draw a diagonal line that goes up and then a straight line over just a little bit. So the diagonal line's a little bit longer and this straight horizontal line is pretty short. Then we'll work on the bottom. This time we're gonna make a diagonal line that comes down until it reaches the line that, the same line that our bulldozer is resting on as if it were resting on the ground. So imagine the ground that this bulldozer is driving on. Imagine it's the same ground, the same straight line that comes over and continue that diagonal line until it reaches that same line. If you need to, if that's confusing for you, just draw a, the ground. So that's what I was imagining in my head, this ground line that the bulldozer is resting on. Just continue it over and make sure that your the blade of your bulldozer comes down to that same line. 
Then we'll just draw a straight line over a little bit, as long as you'd like your blade to be. So if you want really, really long prongs that come out on the front, you can make it even longer. Now, as long as you want the prongs to be, draw them in now. I want my prongs to be about that long. Okay, so now we're just gonna connect the blade here. We're gonna draw a line from the top to the bottom where it would connect with the prongs. So that's gonna look like this. Now we have the prong that sticks out and the bulldozer blade. We'll make the hydraulic system here that lifts the blade and we'll do that by drawing two very thin parallel lines. So two lines that are very close together from the middle of this diagonal line here. And we're gonna draw them up almost, almost till they hit, until they hit this engine part of the bulldozer. Okay, so we'll do two just like that. Pretty close together until they almost hit this engine part. Now draw a diagonal line here to connect them. And then from there, we're gonna continue these lines at the same angle, but they're just gonna be a little bit thicker. So it's kind of like we just continued these up. We just made them come out a little bit. So they're a little bit thicker. And then we'll connect these two lines here on the top. So we've made a nice little rectangle space here and then we'll erase what's in the inside. So there's the hydraulic system that pulls the blade up. Now the only detail I have left to draw is the exhaust pipe. And I'll draw it right up out of the top. It'll come up, curve over, and then do the same thing here, make a little pipe, and draw an oval at the top where the exhaust could come out. Now that is the end of the bulldozer. You can also add a small screw circle here that holds it all together. Now that is the outline of our bulldozer. It looks great. Head to the bonus tips and I have just a couple tips for you. Okay, just a couple tips. You know that most bulldozers are yellow, so I'm gonna stick with that theme with the, a lot of the yellows. But I wanted to show you how to do the windows. Now, we're just going to make these three sections windows and this part's gonna stay yellow. This is kind of like the cab that the driver sits in and then this could be like a, a window door. It's gonna be gray, so what, so grab your gray pencil. Any gray will work. Even just your regular number two pencil will work for this. And what you're going to do for each section of the window is outline it. And then working with small circles, you're kind of making like a long slinky with your pencil and just going in circle, circle, circles, really tiny. You'll go all the way around and then move your hand back on the pencil a little bit. Draw another layer here. You see how it's getting a little bit lighter? And then move your hand back a little bit more and do another layer. And then see how much lighter it is? I'll just try to blend them together. So I'm gonna do that all the way around. Okay, now what I see here and what I know that you see is like almost a line of dark, medium, and light. Now we don't want these, this shading to be in lines, if that makes sense. So I'll just go back and pressing lightly, just kind of mix all the colors together. But that darker edge and the lighter edge are still gonna stay distinct because I did push so hard on the back and I'm pushing so light in the top. So just go over, you could use back and forth motions, any type of pencil motions to just blend those colors together. Now I do wanna do this all the way around. 
Okay, now we don't want the middle to be white. So just move your hand all the way back on the pencil and color the rest in very lightly, working over all your other shading just to blend it all together. So now you can see that I've done the darker edge and working lighter toward the center. If you have a different method of doing that, you can definitely do that too. This is just one easy way I found to make it dark along the edge and lighter in the middle. I'm gonna work and do all three of these windows in the same way. You can pause to work here and do that. Great, now the only other spot you're going to need gray for is under here and then these two lines here. So I'll do these real quick. Now the rest of your bulldozer can be whatever color you'd like. I'm gonna stick with yellow, but again, you can choose any color you'd like and it's not gonna look like mine. Remember, yours doesn't have to look like mine and I don't want it to because it's not mine, it's yours. I want it to look like yours. It's gonna be great. So choose whatever color you'd like your bulldozer to be, but I do recommend using at least two shades. I am going to have a lighter yellow and a darker yellow so that I can add some detail where I'd like to. For instance, I'm gonna use the darker yellow down here under these wheels just to make it look like it's a little bit more shaded and I'll probably use the darker yellow here in the grill too. Now you probably want to use black for the caterpillar tracks and maybe around these wheels as well. I am also going to use black here. I'll work on that now. And I'll also do my exhaust, exhaust pipe black. I will also use black again around these caterpillar tracks, but I'll let you fast forward and work on that yourself. Now, pause here. Finish coloring your bulldozer, but don't add any dirt yet because I've got a little tip for you to help make the dirt kind of fun. And I'll do that after I'm finished coloring the bulldozer. So pause here, finish your bulldozer, and then we'll do the dirt together. There we go, my bulldozer's done. Now, you will you will notice if you were watching how I did it or um, as I pointed out, you'll notice that I did use the darker yellow here to outline spaces where lots of the brighter yellow just overlapped so that it did stand out as a different section of this bulldozer. So right here, even though both of these lines are these, this bright yellow, I went ahead and used the darker yellow just to outline it, to give it that little bit of detail. You can also take your darker color and kind of outline the whole thing just to give it a nice edge. So whatever color you decided to do your bulldozer, you can go back with a little bit darker shade and just outline the edges to make them stand out. Now let me show you how a really fun and easy way to do dirt. Now if you want to spend the time to draw rocks and very detailed dirt, you go ahead and do that. Decide now and you do that on your own and it'll be great. But if you want just a really fast and easy way to add a little bit of dirt underneath your bulldozer, grab a couple shades of brown. I've got three shades of brown here. It doesn't really matter what shades, just a couple shades. And with each shade, 
First, put your hand like this on the pencil so you can push hard on the side. So you're gonna hold it at the back and you're gonna put your finger down hard on the top of it. And then, so that this is so that the side of the pencil hits the paper. See how my, my pencil is almost flat. It's almost resting on the page. And then you're just gonna work in big circles to make it like a, a dust cloud. So you'll make it here on the front of the blade. Totally on the side of the pencil, right? And you can work your way as high up as you want this dust cloud to go. And then you can also, still working in circles, work your way underneath the bulldozer and it doesn't have to go any place in particular. In fact, because it's so dusty, you can even come up on your bulldozer a little bit. It can overlap, it's no big deal. Just make crazy circles all along that bottom edge of your bulldozer. And then take the same color pencil and put it out on its very point. And then you're just gonna draw some crazy squiggles with the point of your pencil. to make it look a little bit crazier. Now do the same with two to three shades of brown. Working in the same areas, just right on top of it. You're gonna do the side of the pencil first. Kind of in circles, kind of just in crazy motions here. Lots of squiggles. And then come to the tip of your pencil and add a few more squirt crazy squiggles. This part is so fun because there's really no right and wrong way to do it. It's just fun and scribbly and something that we don't get to do a lot in our art. I'll come back here with one last shade. I'm not going to do a lot of this shade. Just kind of fill in the spots that are too white. And then come back one last time with the tip. Now, if you do want to add actual dirt, you can add small, you can add small dots here and there to represent like tiny rocks that are flying around. Don't do too many of these, just a few to add some detail. There you go, our bulldozer's done. I know that drawing this bulldozer was a little bit challenging. There was a lot of shapes and lines to keep track of. But now that you've got it all colored in, I really hope that you're proud of your work. I'm sure it looks great. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss another class. And I'll see you next time in the drawing class.